Hi, my name is Steve Kinsley. I'm the Chief Wackadoo at Wackadoo Information Systems. Today we're talking about the Teacher Gifts web application. Now this was written specifically in support of a local nonprofit foundation that works with our local public school system to help raise money for teachers. Now the donation campaign works like this. Parents would buy, in this case, breakfast or roses for their teachers in the name of their children and be able to put a short note in next to it saying, you know, little Johnny thinks that you're the best teacher he's got. Uh, Susie loves to go to your class every day. Can't wait to get back to it in the morning. That kind of thing. So the collation process, once those donations are made, is not something that's built into the donation website itself, but a report is extracted. This is where Teacher Gifts comes in. That report is pulled into Teacher Gifts and those gifts are assigned to the teachers within the database. And then at the end, when all of that data is cleaned up, you click a button and the email goes out to all of the teachers. Now we're talking about somewhere between you know a dozen and two dozen schools. We're talking a couple of thousand, maybe 3,000 staff and teachers and administration and people like that. So it's a big process and you certainly don't want to do it manually as it used to be done in the old days. So we're going to walk through the teacher gifts knowing that what we're doing is we're pulling in that report automatically allocating the teachers, we're cleaning up the things that we can't assign automatically, and then we're going to talk about how to send out that email and everything like that. So let's get started. Now, if you're looking at this video, odds are that you're doing this from the Public School Foundation. PSF is the name of the organization we're talking about. And that you've got your schools already defined and you've got your teachers probably in or you've got to clean them up uh, each year. The list changes, obviously. But what you do have is a backup file from last year, which I'm going to start with a sample data. Again, this is all randomly generated data. And I'm going to do a restore operation, which is basically what you're going to do at the beginning of the next year. Yes, we're going to completely erase all of our data from the server. When it's done, we're only going to have what's in the file. So I have this random export file. Your file is going to have the name of your organization. It's going to say data archives on it. The extension is xml.zip. And we pull that in. And this is very quick because it's not a lot of data. And we come in and we get started. And we go, oh, great. We've got 100 teachers. Again, randomly generated stuff and we've got our schools defined. So let's start with our definitions at the top. When you're defining a school, you click on that and you see that you've got a school ID, you've got a school name. It looks like it's the same thing, but that's just a presentation layer thing. When you go into edit, you see the actual school ID number. Now that is a database reference number. It's gonna be about 20 digits long or 25 digits long or something like that. And uh, the sample data does not reflect that. You've got the name of your school, and then you've got a list of abbreviations that people use for that school. So in this case, Tiny Tyke Nursery might be called TTN by people colloquially, or it might be called Tville or Tykeville or Tyke City. Um, I'm making this stuff up. And so there you go. I've got another one. Let's go to uh, Central Middle School. So Central Middle is Central Mid or C Mid or CMS. You get the idea. So you're not sure how people are going to type in that name uh, when they type in the, the school name because the system on the other end is just, a, en is just an entry text field. It is not a drop down. Uh, it's not something where they went in and, and pulled the names of the schools from a drop down or anything like that. Um, that website does not support that kind of activity. So we've got schools, we've got teachers, we've got no gifts. Now, if you did an import from last year's backup file, you probably have gifts here, in which case you're gonna go down and hit the clear all button. It's gonna delete everything on this list, meaning the gifts list. And we're gonna pull that stuff away. And there we go, and you should, once you do that, you'll have an empty gifts page. Now, we'll talk about unmatched gifts in the bulk email or an email errors and reports and things later. What we're looking at right now is down here in the corner where we say import. Now, import, we've got four different import file formats. We're going to ignore export, this first one, export format. That's talked about in another video that we did called import, export, and, and it's not important for, for this application. What is important for this application are 
your custom import templates. Now, these three, the PSF breakfast only, general donations only, and roses only, are something that are custom defined for your report. So there is another video that you can watch that talks about import templates, but I'm gonna jump in and do a very high level thing here and show you that these are your three import templates. For the PSF, these are the ones. So I'm gonna click on roses only, and you'll see that there are a bunch of fields that can, can be brought into our system. The teacher first name, last name, uh, the first name, last name down here at the bottom are for the parents. Uh, the gift name is the student's name, uh, that kind of thing. And I'm going to drop some randomly generated data in here. And you'll see that when I click on teacher first name, it highlights that. Same thing with last name, school, date. The gift count for roses is in column 13. The gift type, we're hard coding the, the name rose into, or the word rose into this particular value. Um, the first name column, and so you see sort of how we're mapping stuff in. This is actually the file that, you, that you're getting from that third-party website. And I'm not going to change anything here, so I'm just going to cancel out of this and go back to our list because those are already predefined. So once you've got your teachers defined, you're going to have first name, last name, you're going to have their email, you're going to have the school that they're assigned to. Once you've got all of that defined, and you have actually more fields than that. Let's go look at Violet Alexander. So if we were to come in and, and to edit this, we would have their first name, last name, their email address. You have to make sure that their email address is correct. And I'm going to show you my ugly face on this one because this is important. I don't have a valid value. I'm going to cancel out of that. The reason that it's important that you get your email address right is that you don't want any of those emails to bounce. Now, a couple of different things are going to happen. It's going to bounce into your email as you send it, um, or it's going to bounce back into this system. But if you go through the process of making sure that the email addresses are correct on your way in, everything is going to go smoother. Make sure that you spend good time making sure that those are correct, that you don't have any typos in there. Okay, so we're now going to, uh, the, the other fields that are there um, can be used as well. Grade, the position, are they a teacher? Are they, uh, maybe it's somebody who works in the, in the, the lunchroom. Maybe it's a, a, you know, a special ed teacher or something like that. Maybe you don't know um, who it's going to be. Um, and you have the ability to uh, put a note in for that teacher. Maybe they work at two schools and you want to keep that, keep track of that. Um, you know, maybe they work one school in the morning, one school in the afternoon, or it's somebody who does, you know, like I said, some sort of special education kind of a thing um, where they rotate around multiple schools. But there's your school list and you, you pick which one they're going to go to there. Now, we're going to go in and we're going to actually do the import. Now watch this. I'm going to come down here to import and I'm going to do roses. We're going to do roses today. And I'm going to pull it in. This is the report from the third party website. The one that we just looked at where we were clicking on fields and seeing it. And now this is going to take a little bit. So it's importing the gifts first. But then what it's going to do for this application is it's going to assign gifts to the teachers. Now, what that's doing is going through and using the search engine technology and the database technology and string matching and all kinds of things to go in and say, okay, we don't know how the person actually typed the teacher's name in, but we're going to do as good a search as we can. And if we can identify one teacher that matches that, we'll assign it to that teacher. Otherwise, we're going to mark this gift as unmatched. And this is important because you have to go through and make sure that all of your unmatched gifts are assigned to the proper teacher. And that's part of the process that you have to go through. So we're going through and we're assigning roses. And I'll be honest, I should have done this once before on the roses. I did it on the breakfast and it ran up to 9% before it actually did this. So let's see what we've got here. So we're at six. Again, we've already imported the gifts and now we're assigning them to the teachers. And let's see how far we're going to go. I'm just going to sit here and let it run and I'll probably edit out part of this. 
so that you're not just sitting here. But that's, you know, this is a pretty good indication of, you know, how, how the system is going to import, import your data. And we have success. Okay, so that ran up about the same 9 or 10%. Now, what we see here is that we just pulled in 787 different donations of gifts. Now, that's not the same as the number of roses that were purchased, because you see some people did one, two, three, however many. And we see that the amounts that were in this file are, are for these, it's about $5 a rose in this particular example. So... Now, this is, where, this is where your job comes in because now we have to go and say, what didn't get matched? So we're going to go look at the unmatched gifts page, which is right below it. And we see that we've got 83 different gifts that are not matched. Now, in order to match this gift, I have Dominic Schultz. And I click on Dominic Schultz and you see it's selected right there. And it goes out and it's going to look in our system and see who are the people named Schultz out there? Who are the people whose names start with S in the last name or D in the first name? And we go out and we try to find the closest match that we can over here. These are the similar sounding teachers. Now, this is randomly generated data. So the fact that it's Caroline Schultz versus Dominic Schultz, I happen to know that Dominic Schultz and Caroline Schultz are really the same person. Now, down here at the bottom, you saw, I'm going to make this screen just a little bit bigger so you can see the whole footer. There you go. Now, uh, if I unselect Caroline Schultz, you'll see that that button goes away. When I've got one selected on each side, I get a merge button. And I go, okay, I want anything that just came in for Dominic Schultz, who's marked as unmatched, and I'm going to merge it over. Before I do that, I want to go show you Dominic Schultz on the teacher's page. And you will see that his email is unmatched. That's the indicator to us that we don't know who this person is. And that you would have to, if you liked Dominic Schultz and there was a Dominic Schultz and there was another teacher, you had two Schultzes, you would come in here and you would edit this email name right here and put in their their email properly here, and that would automatically take them off the unmatched list. Okay? So I go back to unmatched gifts, and because the teacher email is the word unmatched, I click on that, and I know that it's Caroline. I meant this was supposed to be Caroline, and we're going to merge that over. And we say, okay. And there we are. It just processed it and did it again. Now I'm looking at Lucy Mosley. And I know that Hannah Mosley is really who we meant. So we're going to do that same thing again. And it goes through the process and it takes all of those, those gifts, moves them over to the, the proper teacher and pulls them off. You have to go through and do this for every one of these. Let's assume Gabriella Mosley is really a good name here. Okay. So if Gabriella Mosley, Mosley, excuse me, is a good teacher, I'm going to come out here to edit and I'm going to go g.mosley at fake school email dot org, whatever that email address is, and hit save. And now when I come back to unmatched gifts, she's gone. She's not on the list anymore. So you get the idea for how to go through your unmatched gifts and assign them all. Yes, you're going to have a whole bunch of those because the especially for those of you at the PSF, especially because you've got an input field that parents will type in whatever. And you've got multiple name spellings. You've got cultural things where, you know, names are spelled one way, but it really sounds the other way, stuff like that. And you're going to run into all of these things. And this is a big part of your job is to line these things up. But we did the bulk of them ahead of time ourselves. Okay. That was the trick here. That's, that's the savings. Now, let's pretend that this list is zero right here. And we've taken care of all of these guys. 
And now we're ready to send out the email to the teachers and say, okay, great, what is it that we're going to do? Okay, so let's pretend that you've emptied out this list now and you've taken care of all of them and every every gift in the system, the program's over, the campaign's over. So let's pretend that you've gone through and you have cleared out all of the unmatched teachers. Now, you would go through this process, you would merge them, you would put their email address in, you would take care of all of that. Now you're ready to send out the bulk email to the teachers because the, the donation campaign is over and you want to send the bulk email. We're not in that situation right now. We've got 80 of them left, but we're going to pretend that we're all done. So now we go to the bulk email emailer page. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on an available email report that we've got and we've got some email templates. Well, okay, we're back down to this custom templates thing. So before we talk about that, let's talk about the templates for email or for reports and for the email itself. Let's come down here to custom templates. And we're going to look at our report templates. And I've got a handful of custom reports that we did for the PSF. Some of them are email, some of them are not. The gift details are for all of your teachers and the gift details for a selected teacher only appears when, you've, when you wanna send out a, this bulk report to a single teacher. And I'll, we'll walk through that in a moment. What a report looks like, it's literally just a database select statement. If you don't, you don't have to care about this. This is something that you would contact us. We would give you support on um, to, to update this or to tune it. But we see that what we're looking at are gift types of rows or breakfast. This is the only place in the system where it really matters what your different gifts are and things like that. Then I'm going to look down and say, let's look at our email templates. Now the email templates, I'm, I'm not going to jump into this PSF one because it's got some proprietary information. I'll give you the default one and show you what that looks like. Basically what this is, is a little HTML template that allows you to do a mail merge kind of thing just by putting in the field names with little squiggly brackets around them. And then there's a special format for doing this particular kind of table and then the account contact information is, is the head of your organization. Uh, in this case, the director of the PSF has her information going in there. So what this lets you do, and there's a whole other video about email templates, but I'm going to bounce you in so that you can see what this looks like in HTML because this is something that you can do um, if you have someone who has some expertise can help you go do this. So there is a very specialized HTML tag. It's not an HTML tag. We made this up. This is only for wackadoo applications. We call it resource block. And this is the thing that tells us to put the table in. And each row in the table is going to have a gift date and a gift type and the gift name and the gift note. And you'll see what that that, that fills in in just a moment. So I'm going to toggle back to my WYSIWYG. If I don't like the language here, uh, for, for I don't want to say for all you do, for everything you do. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to type everything you do. And I'm going to save that. And so now if I go back into my default in appreciation for everything you do. So you and you can do this. I mean, you've got bolding, you've got colors, you've got, I mean, all of the stuff that you can do. You can put images in. Now, again, this is a low level HTML thing that you would do, but what you would be looking for is, where'd that image tag go? There it is. That's, a, that's a, an image tag you would put in the source for your image and things like that. And it would appear, you would be able to see that. It has to be a publicly available uh, image uh, for you to be able to do that. So I'm going to cancel a lot of this. And I've already talked about report and import templates. Uh, I've already talked about email templates. We're back on the bulk emailer. Now, 
you'll notice that I have PSF gift details. This is the report that I want to run that, that was specific for that particular thing. I could just do the gift details um, and that's a more generic version of it. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't go into some of the same detail. It's got a slightly different thing on it. So this PSF one, I've selected that. For the PSF, if I go out and I select a particular teacher, I'm going to put, put, uh, click on Violet, for example, and I come back to the bulk emailer, you see that I've got another choice available. Now, this is going to be just for that one teacher. Now, that teacher doesn't have any gifts assigned to them. So let's go find somebody who does. And I'm looking for a teacher. We're looking for Caroline Schultz. She's got a whole bunch of them. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to look for Caroline. Whoops, not Carolina. Caroline Schultz. And I'll click on her. And now I'll go back to bulk emailer and I will click on the, if I do PSF gift details, that's everybody. If I scroll down, you'll see that I got a whole bunch of them. If I just do the selected teacher, that's a much shorter list. These are just the ones that are going to Caroline Schultz. So this is a way that you could go out and you could work on just a single teacher if you wanted to send just out one, send out one notice. Now, you can't send an email yet until you select your template. So if I select my default gift notice template, again, that's going to be something that uh, if you were actually doing it, you'd use your PSF one. If you're the PSF, you'd use whichever custom email template you wanted to use. Now you've got two mechanisms here. You've got the ability to send a test email to yourself or to anybody else if you want to take a look and see what this email is going to look like. Or you can click this and it will send the bulk email. It will cycle through all of these report results and send all of your emails out. This is here so that you can see what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to myself and I'm going to see what this email looks like. Okay, now you notice that I've got a bunch of different gifts from a bunch of different, for a bunch of different kids. And I'm going to send that out. And this is going to give you the ability to set the subject for this. This is an automated message from fictional charity. Well, that's not what I want to do. So what I want to do is I want to say, this is my uh, fundraiser gift report. Uh, gifts for you from the fundraiser and let's just be fun and make it all word capped okay there we go now this talks a little bit about how you do your field names and things like that but that again is a separate email on uh, a separate video on email templates and it's going to send that test email out and i had a success and i had zero failures great that worked just fine now I'm going to go out and I'm going to look at my email. Now we're going to probably see a whole bunch of email here. Uh, I've got some troubleshooting. I've got some other things going on. And I'm waiting for that email to come in. And there it is. Gift for you from the fundraiser. Okay. And so you see over here, I've got this table of gifts that came in. There's a footer that's automatically applied telling people that, yes, this is a valid email. Um, my account information is not completely filled in. That's why those fields were not properly set uh, because this is my test fictional account. But hello, Caroline Schultz, appreciation for everything that you do. That was the change that we made earlier. Okay. You get the idea here. So that's the purpose of this whole, whole thing. Now, had email failed, one of two things is going to happen. You're going to get the bounce in your uh, in your personal uh, inbox, the one that's set up for your account that this is sent by, or you're going to see that on the email errors page um, as uh, the web bounces the, them back here. It depends upon the kind of failure and things like that. So that's pretty much everything that you need to know about the Teacher Gifts web application. If you have any questions or comments, or if I missed something and you need clarification on something, please feel free to reach out to us as shown in the Contact Us page at wackadoo.info. 
or wackadoo.org. Thank you.